So we're here to talk about Open RAN with Wind River, and I'm joined by CTO Paul Miller. Welcome, Paul. Thanks for having me here. Wonderful to talk to you. Good stuff. So um, I guess Wind River has been involved in a couple of uh, high profile Open RAN and VRAN announcements over the past uh, few months or so with Verizon and, and Vodafone, no less. Um, in both cases, you mentioned this idea of um, a container-based software infrastructure for, for, for VRAN, sometimes abbreviated as CAS. Can you tell us kind of what that is and, and how it helps? Sure, thanks. And we're certainly excited about those recent announcements and I'm really honored to earn their business. Um, CAS or Container as a Service is really part of the new disaggregated approach in the way that people are building 5G deployments. They're using a, a fully distributed virtualized architecture uh, using cloud native technology, hence the CAS uh, terminology. And uh, in particular, Wind River through our studio product has the ability to provide that geo distributed cloud technology that's really uh, enabling uh, full edge scale deployments of 5G VRAN. So, and this uh, this software does it run? Um, this software runs at the cell side on a you know like a one U two U server, or does it run on the edge cloud? Actually, the solution we bring to market is capable of running from core to edge at varying scales, right? And in particular, the investments we've made in this technology have some attributes that are very attractive to highly scaled edge deployments. We do have the ability to scale down to a single node and re retain 100% of the high availability and uh, low cost edge footprint required for deploying tens of thousands of sites at the edge of the network. But as you progressively move to the core of the network through the open RAN functions such as RU, CU, and DU up to the 5G core, all of those elements now run on a virtualized framework. And so at the core of the network, you may have a deployment with hundreds of servers moving out towards the edge with only a single server. And we have the ability to support that CAS architecture with a single software implementation. Mm -hmm. And so just, just, just help me out a little. Are you making a play then for the the whole of the telco cloud of this kind of core through to, to edge, or is this more orientated at, at uh, far edge and, and, and uh, near edge and then integrated with the rest of the, of, 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 of the cloud? I think we see the greatest opportunity right now in intelligent edge systems and the emergence of uh, edge access around 5G and the new applications that are emerging there, such as uh, vehicle to vehicle accident avoidance and private 5G, the emergence of industry 4.0 and automation, AI and augmented reality at the edge. So there's an explosion of new opportunity there. And the architecture that we built in our product is really designed to satisfy those intelligent edge systems need from the perspective of supporting development for those environments, as well as deployment operations and services uh, to ensure that the customer has a complete end-to-end -end solution to support that need. Of course, the technology can be used in the core as well and, it, and is used there, but the real greenfield growth is around intelligent edge systems. We've even seen industry data that shows that about 80% of the compute will move to the edge by 2026. So this technology is really designed to embrace that shift. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you mentioned operations that often gets forgotten, but for, for, a, for a telco, it's probably the biggest part of their costs and is what takes all their all their time and energy very often. Um, the the software you have does that sit under a, like a common orchestration system for the, for the operator? Or are they going to end up having, you know, diff, different orchestration systems for their core cloud and edge cloud? We actually have a couple of different capabilities there. Uh, you're correct to key off of the OpEx sensitivities for a service provider, and we've done a lot in this platform to embrace high levels of automation. So for example, full zero touch deployment at the edge, if you're deploying 100,000 sites and thousands of sites per week, you need to have a fully automated way of deploying those systems from a fully dark site to a fully operational site without any human intervention, as well as the ability to provide a single pane of glass to manage and operate that entire network. And then, of course, integration northbound with orchestrators. And we also have our own full automation platform offering that is fully edge aware and understands the distributed nature of our system. Uh, so this is one of the reasons why we've been successful in this space is our staff is really built up of people that are very experienced operating cloud infrastructure and they understand the operational concerns. It's not just about a Kubernetes or CAS infrastructure. It's about the operational tools and automation that you provide with that to make it actually cost effectively useful by the customer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good stuff. So I also wanted to ask you about a couple of industry initiatives and um, open source projects. So um, if I understand correctly, the, the, the software we've been talking about here, it's essentially using uh, a, a software from a project called Starling X under the hood. 
Could you tell us, uh, I guess, a bit about Starling X and, and Wind River's contribution there? Absolutely. So Wind River, Wind River was one of the founders of Starling X several years ago, along with other um, major industry, industry players such as Intel. <clears throat> Excuse me. The reason for founding that project with lots of um, open source projects in play for uh, containerized infrastructure such as Kubernetes and the CNCF is we needed a full infrastructure offering that understood and embraced the challenges of a distributed cloud system. And that's really what Starling X is about. If you're looking at reusing legacy technology like OpenStack or Kubernetes even, uh, and then trying to highly distribute that across a wide area network with geo-separated sites, you introduce a lot of problems with high availability, survivability, and self-healing in that network deployment. So Starling X reuses Kubernetes and cloud-native technology, but then embraces it with a new control plane that enables it to be geo-distributed and automated across a wide area network. And that's really the fundamental difference with Starling X and why it's been embraced by the 5G community, because as you well know, the fundamental challenge of deploying 5G VRAN infrastructure is a geo-distributed problem. So if you desire to use virtualized frameworks for that, you need something that understands those requirements and solves them. Yeah, I mean, I think those uh, the, the customer references you have are really very positive for it. I mean, I remember looking at Starling X maybe a couple of years back and thinking this had some way to go. So it's it kind of incredible yeah. progress for quite a short time. I'm um, uh, impressed with that. Um, the, the other project I want to talk about was uh, OpenRAN, or I guess more specifically uh, ORAN Alliance and, and um, the whole set of working groups there and specifications uh, coming out of that uh, initiative. Um, one of your references was Vodafone talking about their, their, their big OpenRAN announcement they had recently. I think uh, one of the first worldwide, possibly first in Europe or, or something like that. How are you involved in that project? So Vodafone is really a, a strong investor in and proponent of the open RAN approach. And as you can see laced throughout their press announcement, the vendors, including ourselves, that are involved in building that European first uh, open RAN architecture deployment uh, is really a um, testament to the growth of open RAN as well. In the same way that Starling X has reached production quality and is deployed in live networks, Open RAN is now um, seeing the fruition of all the investments from the vendors that are pouring intellectual property and uh, crowdsourced innovation into that. Uh, we see that manifested in the ORAN activity. In particular, our participation there is in Workgroup 6, where we provide the, the open source technology that's used for OCloud. And that is the fundamental underpinning of virtualization for all the different uh, VRAN split models that you might entertain um, when building an open RAN network. And Vodafone has seen the benefits of this. Obviously, some of these are commercial, where uh, instead of like an appliance-based domain where there's a lot of competition at the front end of the build of that network, now with a fully virtualized and disaggregated approach, there's competition throughout the entire life cycle of that network because these pure software functions can be switched in and out at the carrier's will. So it creates a much better business context uh, to more cost optimally run their network over the life cycle of the network and also provides a framework via the virtualization to now host advanced applications on that same infrastructure to reuse the investment that they're making in deploying 5G. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And just again, that OCloud interface is working group six in, in our alliance? That's correct, yes. Yeah, okay. It's one of the things I guess I noticed particularly about the Vodafone announcement was, um, you know, they're name checking all their vendors. Um, I think that the, the interesting thing about obviously it's great for vendors and so forth, but I guess it serves their own purpose as well in kind of you know, stimulating and, and developing the ecosystem. Um, are you seeing that being a, a, you know, are you working with just a handful of leaders now or is it broadening out yet? To grow the participation in ORAN, we're seeing that, you know, obviously you have the legacy vendors that would, would generally prefer to protect the way that it was, right, and be able to provide hardware-based systems for deploying 5G. But as we talked about a little while ago, the the new contemporary expectations of our of our consumers, the ability to have self-driving cars and telemedicine and automated lights out factories, these are really enabled by 5G. And they are the fundamental motivators for a carrier deploying 5G. As we know, most of the public commercial market with cell phones is a saturated market. The only way for a carrier to build new revenue is to build these new application revenue streams. And uh, technologies like ORAN and a virtualization approach to VRAN and 5G our enablers for those revenues. So uh, eventually you'll see that shift in the market that we've already seen where lots of vendors are now coming to the ORAN ecosystem and helping build that fully virtualized approach because it is 
in the same way as it was years ago in the core of the network with NFE, it is an inevitability for the edge of the network. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Paul Miller with Windra, thank you very much. Thank you.